There's almost nothing that says India more loudly and clearly throughout the world today than India's iconic musical instruments. The sounds these instruments produce under the hands of a great master are astonishing and wonderful. But these objects themselves are also beautiful and intriguing to behold. In this short podcast, I'm going to reflect a little on the history of Indian musical instruments on display outside India in exhibitions and museums during the colonial reign of Queen Victoria, and particularly those held in the Victoria and Albert Museum in London. Many of the Indian instruments on display and in the archive of the V&A today hark back to Victorian colonial times and a number of them were originally sent abroad to be displayed in one of the Imperial World Exhibitions held in London, Paris, Canada, Australia, the United States, and so forth, between 1850 and 1940. In this podcast, I shall connect this history of display abroad back to contemporary developments in Victorian India, where instruments were also displayed in exhibitions in Calcutta, Madras, and Delhi. The British in India had been collecting musical curios and bringing them home since the 17th century. They especially liked Ragamala paintings like this beautiful one of Rag Meg. But the British were also fascinated by Indian musical instruments, whose sounds they heard as at once highly sophisticated and utterly baffling. Indian musical instruments were prominently featured as iconic of Britain's Indian possessions in the first ever world exhibition, the 1851 Great Exhibition held in London at the instigation of Prince Albert, Victoria's consort. The world exhibitions were held to display to one's colonial rivals the height of technological invention, Victorian British power over the raw materials and manufactures of their colonies, and increasingly as the 19th century wore on, the habits, customs and crafts of their colonial subjects. At the 1851 exhibition, a small set of Indian instruments were physically staged in a class of their own as part of the fine art section of the East Indies exhibit and visually staged, as we see here in the catalogue, as a kind of still life. The instruments, surinda, bean, tambura, sarod, several sitars, pakavaj, tabla, sarangi and so forth, were sent to the exhibition by three what were then called native princes, the ex-ruler of Mashidabad, the Maharaja of Jodhpur, and Babu Fateh Narayan Singh, who was related to the Maharaja of Banaras, Udit Narayan Singh. Udit Narayan Singh in particular was famed as a patron and had the great hereditary bean players Umrah Khan and Muhammad Ali Khan at his court. We actually know a lot about courtly Indian instruments of the mid-19th century from local music treatises, such as this treatise in Urdu, the Ghanshai Rag, from 1862-3. to Which instruments were popular? Which ones old? Which experimental? How they were constructed? And so forth. This is a drawing of all the different components of the bean or Rudravina as it would have been constructed around about 1870 in Delhi. Why did these rulers send musical instruments, of all things, to the Great Exhibition? The date is critical. 1851 was six years before the 1857 uprising, or mutiny, which had a devastating transformative effect on music and patronage right across India. The instruments these rulers sent reflect the established courtly culture of the immediate pre-Raj era, and an older idea of cultural power. Equally important, though, is that they all supported the British during the uprising. This suggests these three rulers' musical exhibits were simultaneously designed to curry favour, and to use the reality-making powers of the British colonial exhibition to bolster their reputations globally as exemplars of the Ancien Régime. Attempts to use these reality-making powers to reinvent Indian music as scientific in colonial eyes were more evident at the 1886 Colonial and Indian Exhibition held in South Kensington at what then became the V&A. 
India was recreated on an even more lavish stage as a series of rooms and even a whole palace made by and featuring live Indian craftsmen, with a working royal drum ensemble or nobat above the gate. Again, the Maharaja of Jodhpur sent sitars. This time, the municipal committee of Amritsar, a colonial innovation, sent a taos. They sent it for the Punjab section, and they also sent sitars, sarangis, and other classic instruments. According again to this treatise from Delhi, which at that time was ruled from Punjab, the Comancha and Taos played the same way, were iconically Punjabi. This diagram of the Taos, meaning peacock, is remarkably like the one now belonging to the V&A. But the 1886 exhibits were overwhelmed by an exhaustive set of instruments, scientifically classified and catalogued, sent for the Bengal section by the reformist musicologist Surindra Mohan Tagore. This is just the Vena section of his catalogue, which he insisted be reproduced verbatim in the main catalogue. Hundreds of instruments in museums and conservatoire collections all over the Western world, including the v &A, were donated by S.M. Tagore around this time. Many of his instruments were made just for display and never played. The newest thing about his list is his invention of Sanskrit names for perfectly ordinary instruments. Tritantri Veena for the sitar, Saradiya Veena for the sarod, but also a proliferation of new hybrid instruments, the Bharata Veena, formed out of the Rudra and Kachapi Veena. Here, he was inventing an ancient past for new instruments and using the gullibility of the British establishment to help him make it come true. It has been suggested that the hybrid and rare instruments many of them unplayable, that he sent to collections abroad were themselves invented to create a complete systematic catalogue. That is to say, they were museumified from the beginning. But in fact, as evidence from all over India in the 1860s and 70s shows, this was an era of experimentation in musical instrument making. This awkward looking instrument is a surbin or bean sitar invented in 1870, according to this text at least, by a Delhi princeling called Mirza Kali Saab. So this gorgeous hybrid sitar bean now in the Victoria and Albert Museum's collection is probably not an artefact deliberately designed for a museum to fake antiquity. Rather, it reflects an extraordinary modern moment of creativity and experimentation in the Indian musical instrument tradition. In 2015, the Darbar community and the Victoria and Albert Museum put on a fabulous online exhibition of these musician, mus musical instruments, which you can listen to uh, and you can hear the sitar being, being played by one of the famous Dagar brothers of Drupid performers on the V&A website and on the Darbar website in the links connected to this podcast. Thank you.